1993, photojournalist Kevin Carter took a photograph that would shock the world, an image Time magazine would later call an icon of Africa's anguish. Captured in the foreground is an emaciated child, and behind them sits a vulture, calmly waiting. The photograph appeared on the front page of newspapers across the world. Accolades would pour in for Carter, including a Pulitzer Prize, but also criticism. By those incredulous, a photographer could take such a photograph without instead helping the child. Two months after receiving his Pulitzer, Kevin Carter would be dead from suicide. The note he left read, I'm really, really sorry. The pain of life overrides the joy to the point that joy does not exist. The obituaries that followed suggest a tale in which the photographer was no longer able to live with the horrors he had witnessed. While this is partially true, Carter's story and the reasons for his suicide are invariably more complex. They also discuss the ethical dilemma, long debated amongst photojournalists. When is it no longer okay to witness and you are obligated to intervene? The real question though, is who is the real vulture in the photograph? Was it the photographer who took the image or the media who splashed it on front pages across the world? Was it the Sudanese government for starving its people or the international community for failing to intervene? Or perhaps it is us the viewer, sympathetic to be sure, but ultimately indifferent to yet another tragedy on the other side of the world. Kevin Carter came to age as a photographer in the South Africa of the early 1990s. Apartheid was on its last legs, Nelson Mandela had been released from jail, and South Africa was on the road to holding its first democratic elections. However, the country was also teetering on the edge of civil war. On one side stood a group of embittered white nationalists, refusing to accept that they'd have to cede power to the majority black population. They waged a campaign of sabotage and subterfuge, stirring up black-on-black -black violence in the country's townships. There, supporters of the Zulu-based Nkatha Freedom Party, backed by the minority white regime, were pitted against supporters of Nelson Mandela's ANC party. In 1993, approximately 55 South Africans were being killed each day as a result of this violence, and more than 50,000 people would die violently. Disaffected and radicalized youth roamed the streets with AK-47s and would often attack others based purely on their ethnicity. While there were black South African photographers covering the violence, notably Alf Kumalo and Peter Mugabani, the nature of the violence meant that by some strange irony, it was actually easier for white photographers to cover the fighting. Amongst this larger group were four photographers in particular, Kevin Carter, Ken Oosterbrook, Jao Silva, and Greg Marianich, who would eventually become known as the Bang Bang Club. They were part of a new group of young white South Africans vehemently opposed to apartheid and willing to get arrested, harassed, and even killed for what they believed in. Between them, they witnessed and captured some of the most important, as well as distressing, images of South Africa during that period. In 1991, Greg Marianich won a Pulitzer for a photograph he took of a Zulu man being stabbed to death by ANC supporters. It was a well-deserved recognition for all of their efforts, though inevitably also added pressure on Kevin and the rest of the group. In 1993, Robert Hadley, a former photographer now working for the United Nations, invited members of the Bang Bang Club Jao Silva and Kevin Carter to come to Sudan and report on the famine unfolding there. Operation Lifeline, the aid program charged with tackling the famine, was running out of funding and desperate for publicity. In an area dubbed the Hunger Triangle by relief organizations, up to 800,000 people were in danger of starvation. Carter saw the trip as an opportunity to branch out in his career as a freelancer. It was in the village of Ayod, Sudan that Carter came across the scene where he captured his infamous photograph. Seeking relief from the masses of people waiting for food aid, Carter had wandered a little ways from the center of the village when he heard a soft, high-pitched whimpering and saw a small child who had sat down on the ground while trying to walk to the feeding center. As he crouched down to take a photograph, 
a vulture landed behind the child, eyeing a potential meal. Carter would later say that he stayed quietly in that same position for about 20 minutes, hoping to capture a photograph of the bird spreading its wings for an even more dramatic image. It did not do this though, and after he had taken his photo, he claims to have chased away the bird and then watched as the child got up and slowly resumed the journey to the feeding center. After one more day in Sudan, Carter returned to Johannesburg and sold his photograph to the New York Times. They ran it on the front page of the newspaper on March 26, 1993. The caption read, A little girl, weakened from hunger, collapsed recently along the trail to a feeding center in Ayod. Nearby, a vulture waited. The photograph immediately became a sensation. It was syndicated by hundreds of other newspapers and appeared on front pages around the world. Some criticized it, while others applauded its power. Most of all, people wanted to know what had happened to the child and hundreds wrote in asking whether the Times knew. In a special editorial published several days later, they wrote, Many readers have asked about the fate of the girl. The photographer reports that she recovered enough to resume her trek after the vulture was chased away. It is not known whether she reached the center. In 2011, the family of the child was tracked down. The child's father revealed that the child in the photograph was actually a boy, despite him being reported a girl. Unfortunately, he also told them that although the young boy Nyong had made it to the center and had recovered, he had died later in 2007 of a fever. While Kevin Carter was not the only photographer to cover the Sudanese famine in 1993, it is his image of the vulture and the little girl that not only garnered the attention of people all over the world to the tragedy, but became, as Time Magazine called it, an icon of Africa's anguish. What precisely was it about the image that made it so powerful and evoked the visceral reactions that it did? Aesthetically, the photograph is highly evocative. In the foreground, we see the starving body of a child wasting away, his individual ribs outlined by just a thin layer of skin. The young boy, initially mistaken to be a girl, is on the ground with his head in his hands in a fetal-like position, his vulnerability exposed. Behind him sits a hooded vulture, which by nature of the angle in which the photograph was taken appears bigger than the child itself. The scavenger looks on with a disturbing calmness while it waits for its victims to expire. All around them, we are surrounded by an earth that is scorched and vegetation that is long dead. It is not an environment fit for human habitation. The brutality of the photograph is one of the main reasons our eyes are drawn to it. There is an inherent shock value to the photograph that makes it hard to look away. As a result, it shatters the complacency of the viewer of any ignorance to a tragedy that until then had been unfolding in a faraway land. It provokes horror, sorrow, and perhaps most importantly, empathy. It is a call to action. Also scattered throughout the photograph are multiple examples of symbolism. It's hard not to see the child sitting in a fetal state as a representation of innocence in its purest form. We immediately wonder where his mother is, what has happened to his family, then, behind him, we have the vulture, which has been a symbol of death as far back as ancient Greece. The bird sits behind the child calmly waiting for its prey to die. It is the angel of death, an impending omen. And then, we have that final question, which the photograph does not answer. What happened to the child? A good photograph forces the viewer to use their own imagination, to picture what happens beyond the frame. The vulture and the child leaves the viewer pondering this, leaving an indelible impression that is hard to remove. As Kevin Carter's photograph, The Vulture and the Little Girl, was published around the world, he received both praise and criticism. On one hand, as James Fallows wrote, that single picture did more than any other news story to draw attention to the horrendous drought and ensuing famine that was racking Sudan. On the other, he was criticized for not carrying the child to the feeding center. One reader, writing into a Florida newspaper, decried, 
the man adjusting his lens to take just the right frame of her suffering might just as well be a predator, another vulture on the scene. The photograph is now one of the most debated and controversial examples of the age-old question of exactly when a photojournalist should put down their camera to help their subject. His friend Chris Murray recalls, the criticism devastated Kevin. Few people knew how badly the Sudan had affected him. Just in the small area where he had been working, people were dying at the rate of 20 an hour, and he was there to compose pictures of those grisly scenes. So was Kevin Carter, the metaphorical vulture in the photograph, or simply the messenger? Surely it was the Sudanese government who really deserved the blame. It was them who had waged a war of subjugation against the Southerners, banning the international community from intervening. Was it perhaps the photograph's inability to exert any real change that was the real source of anger? This photo begs the viewer to act, and perhaps because of the failure to do that, as in ancient Greece, it was the messenger who they attacked instead. And what about everyone else? The media, relief agencies, ourselves? Don't we all represent the vulture? In an era in which the media has been almost entirely commercialized, it is through the use of images such as this that they are able to keep eyeballs glued to the screen. It is the commodification of suffering, requiring the use of more and more extreme images to keep one's attention. And finally, what about us, the viewer? Rina Shah Stamets writes, Maybe pictures like the one of the starving Sudanese girl tell us more about ourselves as citizens of the world than they do about the indifference of a single photographer. The Sudanese girl would not get a second look from most of us had she been alone in a tiny photograph. The vulture landing near her made us hold our breath. In a world of 24-hour news and constant bombardment of images, each more shocking than the last, we have been desensitized and we require higher and higher doses to elicit the same reaction. The tragic irony is that eventually, instead of arousing empathy, images such as this instead result in indifference. As Susan Sontag so aptly put it, images transfix, images anesthetize. On the 27th of July, 1994, Kevin Carter took his own life. In the car, he left a note. I'm really, really sorry. The pain of life overrides the joy to the point that joy does not exist. I am haunted by the vivid memories of killings and corpses and anger and pain, of starving or wounded children, of trigger-happy madmen, often police, of killer executioners. There's no doubt that scenes such as that of the vulture and child had weighed heavily on the young photographer's conscience, as well as the public backlash that had ensued as a result. In one article following Carter's death, a journalist wrote how even some of Carter's friends wondered aloud why he had not helped the girl. But perhaps we should also be aware that Kevin had witnessed multiple examples of injustice and violence throughout his life. First as a child, growing up in an apartheid South Africa he hated, and then later as an adult witnessing his country on the verge of civil war. He spent his life not only bearing witness to this, but documenting it up close with a camera. To do this, and still retain your sanity requires a certain amount of detachment from your subject matter. And if you're not able to do that, as seemed to be the case with Kevin Carter, this eventually takes its toll. I think that Kevin Carter died not because he ignored the child he photographed in Sudan, but precisely because he couldn't. <laughs>